Hi, uh, welcome viewers. I'm Erin Schneider. I am a farmer and I also work with the North Central Sustainable Ag Research and Education or SARE program. Hi everyone, I'm Marie Flanagan. I'm the Communications Specialist for North Central Region SARE. And I am excited to be here with you all today with Tabby steckler hurst who is a third generation dairy farmer in um, Southwest Indiana. And she is here to share with, with all of our curious farmers out there about her project, which was understanding the willingness of farms to utilize lung scanning in their cattle operations. Uh, so Tabby, I will just let you take it from here and share a little more and, um, about where you're from and then just delve into the, into the um, grit of your project. Thank you, Erin, for the introduction. Like she said, my name is Tabby Steckler Hurst and I am a third generation farmer who farms with her dad and her husband in Southern Indiana. And I recently graduated from Purdue University. I got my bachelor's and my master's there. And so that really stemmed the research behind this SARE grant that I had um, performed. And so with that, we can start uh, getting into my presentation. And um, to get us started, I wanted to talk a little bit about bovine respiratory disease or BRD as it's more commonly known. Um, this disease is a disease of the upper or lower respiratory tract. And um, it is the second leading cause of illness in all dairy calves, as well as um, in beef calves. There are significant uh, producer economic things that go along with this disease. And some of those um, include high treatment costs using antibiotics. Um, there's been shown to be a reduction in average daily gain um, there are also increased raising costs that are occurred, and there's increased morbidity and mortality um, from these animals that are diagnosed with this disease, as well as some studies have shown that there to be decreased milk production of those heifers with BRD early in life and when they became milking herds. So one study found that when they combined all of these economic issues that it can cost up to $245 per heifer to treat them for BRD. In the industry, um, we are usually using ultrasound machines when we're pregnancy testing cattle or um, other things related to pregnancy. Um, so I had never considered using it um, as a tool for respiratory disease, but I was introduced to the technology there. And uh, I performed a study during my program where I um, lung scan, I learned how to lung scan and I scanned 420 commercial dairy heifers in an automated feeding system. And I was able to record a decreased um, milk intake as well as a reduced average daily gain from these calves who had respiratory disease um, from, that I identified using the lung scanning technology. Um, so we're gonna go over the procedure first. And um, here I have popped up a few pictures. And so here are the, is the technology that I use. So um, we use an ultrasound machine. Um, like I said before, it's the same thing that they use when they're pregnancy testing cattle. They have just um, found another use for it in the industry. And when I'm lung scanning these calves, um, I will clip um, the hair around the thorax of the, the heifer in between the rib pieces. Um, and that's where I'm gonna be lung scanning. And I will do this on both sides because the lungs of that animal spanned um, on both sides. And when you look in the bottom left hand picture here, um, you can see the anatomy of where the rib is placed and or where the ribs are placed versus where the lungs are placed. And um, I'm gonna take that ultrasound machine um, and I'm the probe, like you can see in the, the picture in the corner, and place it in between those rib spaces. And that's how I'm going to uh, look at that lung tissue to identify if there's respiratory disease or not. Uh, I wanted to go over what a healthy lung tissue looks like versus a diseased lung tissue. So the blue circle I've highlighted here is a healthy lung tissue. You can see it's pinkish in color, pink to whitish in color. And the texture uh, is uh, when you, if you felt it would be um, bouncy to the touch, um, meaning that it's full of air. 
And so that's healthy lung tissue and unhealthy lung tissue is that in red and it can be reddish to purple in color. And this unhealthy lung tissue, and that's what I'm looking for when I'm using the ultrasound machine, um, is made this color and texture because of what we call lung consolidation. And when animals get respiratory disease, they acquire this lung consolidation. And this is um, when the airways of that lung are filled with substances that aren't air, which air is supposed to be in the lungs and that's what helps the animal breathe. At the top here, we have the picture of a healthy lung tissue on the ultrasound machine. And what I'm looking at, um, in the animated picture below is what we call the pleural surface, which is the outermost tissue of that lung. And um, whenever I'm using the ultrasound machine, it's a cross section of the lung that I'm looking at. It's not the entire lung. So you can see this white horizontal line across the screen. And that's that pleural surface that I'm looking at. And when that is white and clear across the entire screen, that shows me that that is healthy lung tissue. So kind of now that we understand a little bit more about what uh, bovine respiratory disease is, what lung damage is, and um, how I can use it on, I can see it on an ultrasound machine, that brings me to the scoring system that I've that I created. And everybody that is in the industry lung scanning now kind of has their own uh, scoring system that they use. And I've adapted it a little bit to make something that works for me when I'm scanning animals. So their their animals are have different severities of lung damage. And you can see here, I have a scoring system of one to six. So here, the one being the healthy lung tissue with that. Um, white line or the pleural surface being healthy. And then down here, there's a six where there is um, a whole bunch of lung damage and across the entirety of the screen. And that is a, a large amount of lung damage. And continuing on, I, I still found that there was an average overall reduction in average daily gain in calves at weaning, as well as when I scan the calves later in life, um, I also found that there was a large reduction in average daily gain post weaning as well. And then I found, like I showed earlier, there's varying degrees of lung damage. So I found that the larger the lung damage was, that leaded to a larger reduction in average daily gain. And I was able to quantify that. And then, um, um, so I found that lung damage can be healed um, through antibiotic treatments and such. Um, but it has to be um, found quickly and efficiently, and then it can be treated. And I was able to, to find the, the, the lung damage using the scanning technology and tell the producers to treat. And then this was um, healed over time. The, for my first objective, um, I wanted to see what is the best age to lung scan. And I found from my perspective that there is no one set age because each farm has different management um, that they do and, and keep their and do things with their animals differently. So I came up with two time points in which I think um, would be valuable for farmers to use. And the first one is um, lung scanning to treat those animals. And then we do know that not all animals can heal effectively from respiratory disease. So I would suggest lung scanning um, at a single time point to decide to cull those animals or change their career um, to not becoming a dairy cow. And for my second objective, um, using the lung scanning on beef farms. I, so I did find that it was a farm if a farm has an adequate suit system, the lung scanning works just like it does for the dairy animals. Um, however, um, it does increase the time it takes to comp uh, compare to small groups in a dairy system or if calves are an individual hutch. So you have to account for the increased time it takes. And because um, it does increase time, I wouldn't suggest um, lung scanning those calves when they arrive at the farm. Um, and I also found from my research that the majority of the lung damage that is occurring in beef calves on the backgrounding system is after they show up on the backgrounding farm. And that's because there's a lot of stress that goes on between this time period. And for a lot of those calves, they're being weaned. 
they're being transported, they're being co-mingled, and they're having to change different feed rations. So all of those stressors can lead to an increased rate of respiratory disease. Um, and then I would scan these calves at the same time, um, you're doing other things so that that increased time is made of use. So example, when you're weighing those calves or when you're vaccinating, um, you can implement the scanning. And by implementing the scanning, I am hopeful that we can catch the subclinical um, cases where farmers aren't able to identify the sick calves, and then we can have a more targeted treatment therapy for those animals with lung damage. I'm going to share a little bit of the results from my survey responses. So background, 76% of the people who answered the survey owned or served farms with over 1,000 cows on each farm. So I knew that I was talking with a lot of farmers with um, dairy backgrounds and had high stakes in the dairy industry. So they really paid attention to what I was talking about. And um, to my surprise, 79% of those people had already heard of lung scanning before the presentation. So um, that was uh, surprising to me. And I really didn't ask follow-up questions about if anyone was actually um, using lung scanning on the farm. However, I, I don't think they were because um, I found, I saw that greater than 50% of farms uh, sometimes or did not track antibiotic treatments on their farm at all. Um, as well as 60% of farms sometimes or don't track individual rate records. So if these farms aren't tracking individual animal records, I can assume that they weren't um, implementing individual animal lung scans as well. So it really isn't highly used. This technology isn't used on dairy farms. And then I asked um, in a final question, um, what are their hesitations for implementing lung scanning? And some of those included skill level, skill level, um, or so finding someone to lung scan, labor needed to, to lung scan, the efficiency of lung scanning, and the cost it would take to implement on this farm. So there are several um, things or barriers to entry for these farmers to use this technology. Um, as a whole, I found that lung scanning technology can effectively and efficiently be used on dairy farms as well as beef farms and their management systems. And I really found that it turned a primarily subjective way um, to diagnose respiratory disease into a quantitative diagnosis. And then um, introducing another technology on farm takes time. And even though most farms have heard about lung scanning, they haven't adapted it on their farms yet. And there are quite a few barriers to entry for these farms to adapt another technology. And then uh, I just have a few next steps and um, for farmers to really um, be able to implement this. I think we need to take more accurate individual animal records. So a lot of times on dairy farms, um, they take individual records as soon as the cow gets into the milking parlor. But I think it's really valuable to understand how the heifer is going to perform individually before she makes it to the milking parlor. And then we can really make some great decisions on who's going to perform best for us um, in the future. And then finally, I think we need to openly discuss respiratory disease on farm. And because it is um, a leading disease and it's something bad that happens on farms. And so I think just open conversations about um, the problems we're having on farms with respiratory disease would go a long way with um, starting to implement technology. Uh, and again, I would like to thank everybody for listening to my presentation today. And if they have any more questions or comments, they could just reach out to me. I have my email and my name here. Um, so with that, um, I can take any questions that anybody has. I can like hear hear and feel your passion and curiosity and awe just coming coming through there. Um, it sounds like a lot of farmers you interacted with are shared this where they're really interested in wanting to adopt. And you mentioned some of the barriers. What what do you think it would take to get uh, another a farmer to go from that knowledge and interest to adoption? Um, I think there are probably several things, and I think um, because farms, dairy farms specifically, are adopting a lot of different technologies. Um, however, these technologies are mostly being adopted on the cow side. 
So once the cow enters the milking system, that's when they really pay attention to those individual records like I was talking about. So typically um, the ones that are gonna be lung scanning or wouldn't know how to use an ultrasound machine are veterinarians. And they're already, there's a lot of things that they already have to do every day too. So um, they're not always gonna be going out and being the ones to lung scan. Um, so that is a really big thing is actually finding somebody that knows how to do this. And there's not very many people that know how to do it right now to, or to find somebody that can efficiently do it. However, there are several people that are um, teaching um, the technology. So I think as the, the years go on, there will be a lot more people so that barrier to entry won't be as severe. I wanted to ask like what's you, you, there's a lot of lessons learned delved in there, but what really kind of bubbled up to the top for you? So one of the biggest things that I learned from um, doing my little project at Purdue to taking it on farm is um, when, and reading through all the research, um, because I have to do that. Um, so what I found when I, what I thought when I started this was that there's only one thing I can use lung scanning for. Um, animals can get respiratory disease and they get lung damage and the lung damage stays there forever. And that animal cannot enter the milking herd. She just has to be cold. Um, but what I found is because a lot of the research being done now is only being done at one time point on animals who are still drinking milk and they're not um, scanning calves at older ages um, or at multiple time points, um, I found that lung damage can be healed. And over time, you, and then I can, I can identify it with the, with the lung scanning technology. I can tell the producer to treat that animal with an antibiotic and I come back maybe a week or two, rescan that animal and it's gone. Um, and I, I didn't think that was possible when I first started um, the grant research um, for SARE. And now I'm like, there's this whole new open door for the lung scanning technology that I didn't even think was possible. So Is there anything that you want to share with our uh, um, viewers and other farmers listening in today um, that... Uh, would feel incomplete, you know, if you didn't have a chance to say that. Yeah, I think I would say um, I originally didn't think I wanted to apply for the SARE grant because like, oh, I've always had this um, thing in the back. I grew up on a farm and I was like, oh yeah, farming is always going to be a part of my life. But because I'm female, I was like, oh no, you won't be a farmer. But now that I've been able to, you know, get the education, um, and really find a passion in what, what I'm good at, I'm like, yes, I can be a farmer. So um, any females out there who don't think they can, um, you can. So that's really what I would say to them. Well, thank you, Tabby, um, for, for just sharing your project and what you learned and where it's taking you next.